Congressman Bill Pascrell, a Democrat from New Jersey, joins me live now. And beside him, Congressman Scott Garrett, a Republican from New Jersey. And they both serve on the House Budget Committee. And I'm glad to say we have you standing side by side because it really seems difficult to get your parties together on anything these days. Anything. I just want to ask you right off the top, Congressman Pascrell, do you think this is, uh, do you think this is going to be productive, this meeting at 530 today? I think it's a good sign. I think uh, it was uh, in the works, really. Uh, who, you know, who blinks first? But uh, the president has been willing to negotiate, not only this year, but in the first four years of his administration. And we should have had a budget by now because the other side chose not to go to conference when both Democrats, the Senate and the House, uh, passed a budget. And we are where we are right now. So it may be only for six weeks, but I think it's a very critical part of the process of making sure we fund America. So, Congressman Garrett, uh, part of the issue has been, of course, the clean resolution, the, the spending bill that has no strings attached. The Republicans wanted strings attached that would start to derail Obamacare because they don't like Obamacare. Whatever anybody thinks about the, the, the philosophy behind that, it's the mechanism behind it that so many people are outraged about. Would your fellow Republicans start getting on board with just a clean bill, just a spending bill with no strings attached? Because if you listen to Charlie Dent, one of your colleagues, he thinks that you're starting to blink, that you'll start to capitulate. So I think both of us, as you said, can agree on one thing, and that is that both sides of the aisle, myself and I'm sure Bill, want to get the government back up and operating and open again. Um, now, Bill did say that uh, the president has been willing to negotiate in the past. I wish that was true. Actually, the president's own words were, when it comes to the CR, he will not negotiate. And he has said that, unfortunately, repeatedly over and over again. Con on the contrary, the Republicans have said, we will negotiate. We came out with one bill. We sent it over to the Senate. Died. Okay, we sent a second one. Okay, you don't like that one? We'll send a third one. Yesterday, we sent three other bills. We have shown that we've had a whole bunch of different ideas that we're willing to throw over to the Senate or to the White House. We're willing to negotiate. We want to get the government open. Um, but up until this moment, uh, the president has said repeatedly, no negotiations. It's only the one way that they want to do it. And unless you have somebody who's willing to meet you halfway, that's when it's really hard to come to an agreement. I, I, so I think I, that the answer to that is no. When fairness. I asked you about Charlie Dent, your Republican colleague, who said that, that it looks like more Republicans are looking to blink and move on and get a clean bill passed without the strings attached, yeah, you're, uh, you're not answering that. Let me talk about Charlie Dent since he's in my conference. And he, he and I have indicated that they, too, like both of us, want the government to be open and get people back to work here in Washington and around the country as well. But I, I, you saw the votes last night. It was a uniform vote, and you saw the votes this past week where Republicans have said, we're willing to negotiate, but we just want to see you extend a hand as well. And so far, the Republicans have stood firm, firm as far as being together, but we're also firm on trying to reach a middle ground on this. We're just waiting for the president to also meet at middle ground. Meetings at the White House are great. Meeting, I'm uh, trying to, for the first time ever, to re invite them in on this is great. It's too bad they didn't do that yesterday when we set up an opportunity for a conference where the Senate actually could have done the exact same thing and send over people to the I have 30 discussion. seconds left. I have 30 seconds uh, left. Congressman uh, Pascrell, have you two know, been meeting considering you're on the what, same what committee? I just heard, what I just heard was bizarre. Uh, we've had the two bodies, the Senate and the, the, the Congress, the House of Representatives, pass budgets five months ago. The usual protocol is let's have those folks represent both the Senate and the House and sit down, have a conference, and work out the differences. For five months, we did not do this, and, and that's a fact of life. And here we are today. This is the main story, not the story of what's happening and you're trying to take apart the budget and pass it piece by piece, picking winners and losers. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, and that's why we are what we are. You tied the hands of the United States working man and woman. You tied the hands of people who work for the government, who have done nothing wrong, but we're punishing them to prove to prove that if we can't take down Obamacare one way, we'll try to take it down another way. We got to get over that. Right, so for the two years, and, 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 and to your point, Bill, you're right. That's um, a point, conferees could have been and should have been. Unfortunately, you know, Harry.
that never appointed conferees to the budget, oh. as, a, as you are well aware. And neither, we had ne and ne No, no, no. No conferees have ever been appointed we have, by we the, have, the... The, 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 the uh, Nancy Pelosi right. named conferees in but, the House. But it's a two, it takes two uh, chambers to do so. And as you're aware, Harry Reid never did <laughs> well, it in the House. Well, who never and, uh, and we didn't do it in the, and we do it in, in the House as well. So you didn't that, do it. That, that we did it, so but sides, you didn't do it. Both sides I'm agreeing with. Uh, or clarifying the record, I should yes. say, that uh, neither Harry Reid nor the House have fully appointed Comp Reese, and that's a problem. But where are we today? Today is we need the president to actually come to the table and agree to negotiate, not just do a photo op and not just do a press release. Can I ask you both a question? I, I've been watching the both of you as you've been talking. You, you are, and this is going to sound crazy, but my God, the two of you won't even look at each other when you're arguing with one another. <laughs> and I'm just no, wondering just if when you are camera. in the, the House budget, you're not looking at the camera either. I'm telling you, I've been watching this for the last three minutes. Oh, when you're on the House Budget Don't Committee together, we were, do you want us speak to dance? Uh, whatever you want us to do, we'll do. Okay. When I'll, there I'll are... Look at, I'll look at you, okay? Okay, well, look, let, when there's no flies Harry on the wall, guys, please. honestly, Ashley listen to the, the question. When there is no the media fly is. on the wall to listen, do you have this kind of tone? Do you take this kind of tone, or do you have more constructive conversations when you're in committee? What sort of tone do we have in committee? In committee? Uh, we have we have an interesting tone in the budget committee. <laughs> we, yes, we, we have many independent people who yeah. know, say their mind, speak their mind. That's a good way to describe usually, it. Usually, usually jump off script, <laughs> and uh, want the best for the United States. But and you know, I believe that both Republicans and Democrats want the best for the United States. Right. And we, you know, we're even more important than the committee. I think is what we do privately on the floor, yeah. what have you. Yes. And when we're doing that, where the cameras are not on, I think we have a very civil conversation. Yes, I'll go, my, my neighbor is a, is a Democrat from New York. We'll have civil conversations on the sidewalk saying, hey, how do you think we get out of this? So we have those well, civil conversations. Have, so this is, this is what I wanted to ask you, even about your body language, because look, I don't think there's anyone watching right now that doesn't yeah. laud you for your commitment to your philosophy. You came to Capitol Hill to make a difference and to work for right. your constituents. You both have different right, right. ideologies, but that's not how laws are made. Laws are made by bringing your ideologies and getting together like human beings and people who can agree and work together properly. Agreed. And that's well, not what the well, public is seeing now, and it's certainly not what we see on TV interviews. Personally, mm -hmm. uh, Ashley, I'm not a true believer. Um, you know, we, we, if we're absolute about our positions, that means that anybody else must be wrong. That's not me. Scott can speak for himself. So we need to come together as a nation. This is important. The debt ceiling is going to come up. If we don't come together, instead of fighting peripheral political issues that aren't going to get us anywhere, we had it. We just had an election. I mean, we're not going into, think of this, we're not going into a presidential election. We just had a presidential right. election. So our only difference on that is, and I, I agree with Bill on that, is some of us would say these other issues are not peripheral. When we're receiving phone calls from uh, constituents who are saying they've been laid off because of the Affordable Health Care Act, when in our own state you had one of the largest insurers saying 50,000 people are not going to get ins health insurance because of the Affordable Health Care Act, Home Depot, one of my favorite stores to go shopping in, they're saying that they're laying off, or rather, laying off of insurance, 20,000. UPS, that's in my district as well, uh, 15,000 oh, people that nationally. Oh, is that the company I tried to part-time America 10 years ago? This is oh, a company. that's the one. This is a company so you know what? I'm going to, um, since, since Congressman Passport, you brought up the debt ceiling, I'm going to hold you to a firm booking 17 days from now, in fact, probably 16 days from now, to come back and talk to me about your tone when you're dealing with the debt ceiling, because Christine Romans was just on telling us Very that if good. we thought that hurricane shutdown was bad, got, I believe uh, I'm paying my bills. catastrophic debt ceiling will be worse. I appreciate that. Do I get that, that, that invitation? Only, you, only bill. I said to both of you, oh, no, 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 no. Okay. you are both firmly booked okay. in the exact and you have to wear the same ties and you need to come back and you need to talk to me about I'll taking this philosophy We'd be more than honored to come and, and talk to you. please, dear and, and God, do not hold me and my fellow Americans hostage in the debt ceiling debate. I appreciate both of your perspectives. Please keep working hard. Maybe visit the White House today at 530 as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Take care.